collimation is the process of aligning your telescope's optical components so that their optical axes coincide. In the case of a Newtonian telescope, this means aligning the diagonal, the focuser, and the primary mirror. If these components are set properly initially, then only a slight fine-tuning is needed at the start of each observing session. The nice thing about collimation is that most of the effort can take place in the comfort of your living room. Right now, you may feel intimidated by the idea of collimating your telescope, but by the end of this video, you should feel like a collimation master. We're going to use a simple model to review the relationships that exist between these components and why their correct alignment is so important. The primary mirror of a Newtonian telescope has an optical axis which extends out from the center of the mirror. Starlight entering the tube, traveling parallel to the optical axis, focuses at the image plane and on the optical axis. The telescope forms its sharpest image here. We call this the telescope's sweet spot. Starlight entering the tube at an angle to the optical axis focuses at the image plane but slightly to one side of the optical axis. The farther off axis these images are, the more distorted they become. This distortion is the result of off axis aberrations. The diagonal mirror reflects the light from the primary mirror into the focuser, which we can conveniently do here in this mock up. Who says you can't bend light? Because of the important role of the diagonal in collimation, it will play a major part in this video. Your eyepiece is used to magnify the images formed at the image plane by the primary mirror. Your eyepiece is used to magnify the star images formed at the image plane. This computer-generated spot diagram shows what stars should look like through a collimated telescope. The large circle represents a low-power, wide-field eyepiece. The best images are on axis at the center of the field. The smaller circle represents a higher-power eyepiece, which has a smaller field of view. When your telescope is out of collimation, the sweet spot, where the images are the best, no longer falls at the center of your eyepiece. In a low-power eyepiece, a telltale sign that a telescope is out of collimation is that the sharpest star images fall away from the center of the field of view, as you see here. In a higher-power eyepiece, a severely miscollimated telescope may not even have the sweet spot visible in the high-powered eyepiece's field of view. Correct alignment brings the sweet spot back to the center of the eyepiece's field. Zeroing in on the sweet spot is what collimation is all about. We created these artificial star images by shining two floodlights on a spherical Christmas tree ornament hung about 100 feet from the telescope. This video image was captured through a 10-inch f5 telescope at 300 power. If your telescope was way out of collimation, your star images might look like this. A properly collimated telescope with good optics under good seeing conditions should produce star images that are points of light surrounded by an airy disk. If you're going to be successful at collimating your telescope, you'll need to become familiar with the objects, the reflections, and multiple reflections that you'll see when you look down the focuser tube. Tape a piece of white paper 
on the inside of the tube opposite the focuser. And then place your eye about six inches from the top of the focuser tube and with nothing in the focuser, here's what you should see. First, identify the inside of the far end of the focuser tube. This will be an important reference surface during collimation. Next, identify the outermost edge of the front surface of the diagonal. This is also known as the clear aperture. Now move your eye as close as possible to the diagonal and imagine the diagonal as a mirror that you are using to look at the bottom of your tube. You should see the primary mirror's surface, the primary mirror clips if you have any, and a dark area around the primary, which is the end of your tube. This is the primary mirror's surface, and this is the dark area, which is really the end of your tube. When your telescope is completely collimated, this dark annulus will extend evenly around the reflection in the secondary. If the collimation is roughly correct, try to identify the reflection of the secondary in the primary. Also, if your mirror has been spotted already, try to identify this spot. While these reflections are not as important as the others, it is helpful to become familiar with them. Take some time to figure out how these images are formed, and you'll be well on your way to understanding the collimation process. You'll need to remove the primary mirror from the scope in order to locate and mark the center of the primary mirror. One of the reasons we removed the primary mirror was so that we could place a mark on it, which will aid us later on in collimation. In order to place that mark, we need to locate the center of the mirror, which is really fairly easy to do. Once you've got the mirror out, put it face down on a piece of paper and trace around the outside. Okay. Then remove your mirror and cut out the circle that you've created. Once you've got your paper template cut out, just fold it in half and fold it in half again. And then if you make a little cut at the corner, when you open it up, You'll have a template to place over your mirror, which will define the center of your mirror. What I like to do at this point, rather than cutting out the central hole, is to leave it intact, place it carefully over the mirror, and then I take a razor blade and I scratch along the crease marks through the paper and into the aluminum on the mirror, a small scratch. That way, if you clean your mirror and the spot comes off, or if it falls off sometime during use, you still have the center located permanently, even after recoating, and you can just place another spot back on top of it. What I like to use for the uh, spot that uh, is something that's easily seen from the eyepiece is a star, and I actually punch a little hole in the center of the star with a leather punch. So we are, here we have our collimation aid, a little five-pointed star with a hole in the center. The hole in the center is so that you can look through it and see the uh, mark that you've placed on your mirror. 
Oops. And gently place the star looking through the hole where the lines that you've scratched in the aluminum are. Place it on the mirror. And you're done. I'm willing to bet you haven't seen too many telescopes with trap doors, but it sure makes showing you what's going on a lot easier. Axial adjustment is the position towards or away from the primary mirror. In this example, it is done by adjusting these two nuts. Rotation of the diagonal holder is simply rolling the holder about the shaft. This is the motion we describe as tilt. Let's take a closer look at the diagonal. We're going to remove it from the telescope and take a detailed look at how it works. Here are a couple of tips to help make your diagonal adjustment a little easier. The screws that originally came with this diagonal proved to be difficult to adjust. A standard screwdriver would often slip out of the groove. We replace them with socket head cap screws. These screws are driven with a ball driver, hexagonal shaped, which locks into place as you make the adjustment. While we have the diagonal out, we might take a look at how it works so we understand the adjustments. When you've taken the three screws out, can come apart and you can see that there's a ball riding in a cup. As you tighten the screws, you cause the holder to tilt. These three screws adjust the tilt of your diagonal holder. If you want to tighten one screw to tilt it in that direction, be sure to loosen the other two first, just a little, and then tighten. When you're all finished with your adjustment, you have to be sure that all three screws are snug and, and reasonably tight. The rotational adjustment of the diagonal holder can sometimes be quite frustrating. If you place a stiff spring on the shaft, you'll find it's quite a bit easier. It would look something like this once it's in the telescope. Onto the spider, place the spring here, and then tighten the nut down. You'll have to set your axial adjustment with the two, screw, with the two nuts then once that's in place, you'll find that you can still get some rotational adjustment, but under normal use and ab use, it should stay in collimation. The second step is to position the spider in the tube. Use a short ruler and measure from the tube wall to the center of the spider holder. Adjust the screws as required to bring the center of the spider into the center of the tube. Be careful when tightening the screws of the spider. You can bend the veins if you aren't careful. If you do find that the spider veins are bending, it may be because the screw is bottomed out in the threads. Go ahead and remove the screw and install a few extra washers This should give you a little extra room to adjust. Oops. Install the diagonal holder with the mirror into the lighter. Look through the focuser tube and coarsely set axial rotational and the tilt adjustments. That's close. There we go. Once you've accomplished the course alignment, your next goal is to fine-tune the axial location of the secondary. That looks good. Your next goal is to fine-tune the rotational adjustment of the secondary.
The next step is the diagonal rotational adjustment. Rotate the diagonal until the end of the tube appears to be centered in the diagonal. The next step is the diagonal tilt adjustment. Here we use the three tilt adjustment screws to center the image of the primary mirror in the axis perpendicular to the rotation adjustment. Here we're looking down the focuser at the silhouette of the secondary. Squaring on the focuser will make an adjustment in this direction. This was the axial direction. This is the direction for squaring on the focuser. Your goal is to center the secondary in the focuser tube. Let's return to door number one for a moment to see what's happening here. Think.